Hello, this is Brittany from Turquoise Street. Um, today we're going to make several pieces using the most recent um, Jesse James Beads mystery or Magical Mystery Bead Box, Fairy Garden Whisper. I am so excited because this was one of my favorites, if not my favorite box of all time, just because it had so many cool colors. All my favorite colors were in here, especially like this aqua green. So today, um, the first thing I want to do is use some patina paint, um, which also is available on jessiejamesbeads.com. I'm going to use the color marine today. So um, my light is a little bright. It's pretty pale aqua-y blue. Um, and there are several colors that go really well with it in our mix. Um, the thing we want to do with patina is because it's really quick, it dries really, really quickly, we want to make sure we um, either use a work surface that can be beat up or put something, a protective layer over our work surface. Um, I'm also going to use <clears throat> two charms from the Comes May Flowers mix um, for this patina part so we I don't know if they're orchids or if they're lilies but they're gorgeous and we're going to patina these today um, <clears throat> I am just going to put down some paper towel and I just have like a recycled applesauce cup or jello cup whatever you want to use that's gonna be my water cup today um, I'm gonna put down some paper towel that's gonna obviously soak through but it's just kind of a secondary um, barrier for me and then I'm just gonna use like this old mailer to put some patina down on uh, and I'm gonna put my little charms here I also grabbed a um, paintbrush Voila. and I have some water just some I just had a bottle of water that was left over in my studio so I'm just gonna put that in my little cup so we can rinse our um, paintbrush we don't want to leave it in the paint this stuff dries super super quickly we don't want to leave it on our paintbrush and then have our paintbrush uh, we can't use it again so I'm going to also grab another piece of paper towel so we can wipe off wipe the patina off of our charms um, I'm just gonna kind of wet my brush a little bit and dry it on my paper towel and you always want to shake your patina till you hear the ball rolling around in there so it's nice and mixed up I mixed it up a little bit before I uh, started filming I'm just gonna put a little little goes a long long way okay as you can see I squeezed out a little bit too much <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna go a little bit further in so we, it doesn't spill off the sides if I squeeze too much this time and I'm gonna dip my brush in my paint and I'm gonna grab my charm. I probably will end up getting this all over my fingers. I do every time. And I'm just gonna dab it where I'd like the color. And I'm gonna actually dab it all over my flower. In the creases. And you can absolutely leave it like this and it'll be so pretty. Um, you can also, once it dries, cover it with some UV resin and cure it in a, um, under a UV light and it would look more like enamel. So I'm gonna slowly wipe off my patina to reveal some of that gold. And as you can see, it's getting all over my nails, but that's fine, it, can, it washes off eventually. <laughs> um, and you can remove or leave on as much as you like. Like I said, this stuff dries pretty quickly. You can also wet your um, paper towel if you wanna get more off but I'm kind of really focusing on the edges. So I really want that gold to pop on the edges, but I want the blue to be in the petals. So I removed a little bit more on these petals down here than the top petals, but I can always go back in with my brush. I'll just dry that off a little bit. And just retouch the petals. And you can make it so it's um, more opaque or you can make it thinner. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe those edges again. And I actually like how it looks. 
So I'm going to put this guy to the side. Here's this guy for a moment, and we want that to dry. So normally this dries really quickly, but since a lot of this flour isn't too rough, it might not dry super quickly. We want to set it aside probably for five minutes, and then he'll be fine. So while that's driving or drying, while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and dry off my, or at least blot my paintbrush. I'm going to come back to my paint, my patina, and we're going to do it again. And I'm going to need a little bit more patina on this. So like I said, little goes a long way. You can always pour more back, more out. You don't want to just squirt a ton onto your work surface and then you have uh, wasted patina. And this stuff, I mean, I've had, I've had, the bottles that I've had are nowhere near being empty. They're a really good deal because they go, they just go a long, long way. Okay, so this one's covered. I'm gonna take my paint, uh, my paper towel and we're just gonna wipe away. If you want, you can use, like I said, you can dampen your paper towel. Um, you can use a cloth, I guess, if you wanted to, or you can just leave it patinaed all over. And I've done that too, but just wanted to change the color of a piece of metal. I've done it where you barely can see any patina, but just slightly changed the color of the item I was working on. Um, just depends on what you'd like to go as heavy, heavily as you'd like. trying to pull the gold off the tips. And then if it dries and you think, mm, there's just too much patina on there, you can take a sanding block or a piece of fine grit sandpaper, clean it up. All right, so I'm going to set that aside and we will come back to these charms later on. Okay, while well our charms dry, my absolute favorite part of the Fairy Garden Whisper box was this cloisonne bead. I am just, it's a stunner. It's one of my favorite beads I've ever seen. So um, I'm having trouble trying to use it, but I really, really wanna use it, but I also wanna just make sure I have it for the future projects too. So something that I kind of thought about was these Beadalon Instant Pendants. So this one has an arrow at the bottom or a spike. Uh, the ones they have in gold on their website right now uh, have the ball on the bottom. I think both are perfect, but I thought it would be great to have my bead in a project that I can wear, but if I decide I want to use it in something else later on down the line, it's not permanent. So um, that's one of the reasons why I love these instant pendant findings. So the way that you use them is you uh, unscrew the finial, put it to the side, slide on the beads you'd like on your instant pendant, and then put it back on, and then you're ready to go and you can make interchangeable necklaces. So we're going to be using that to make a necklace today. I'm just going to cut our um, strand and I'm gonna get a bead mat my bead mat has seen better days that's for sure I also brought out the um, what was this called sweet spring strand it was a bunch of big boy crystals and they're so gorgeous so I thought they went really well with this cloisonne bead um, let's see here And um, there were several other beads on this strand that were just gorgeous. So I'm just going to figure out the configuration that I th think is most pleasing. Um, I'm thinking I want, so we, have, we absolutely have to put this guy on because it's the most gorgeous thing ever. It looks like a little carousel or a castle or something. And I for sure want that guy. I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit any of the other cloisonne beads. I wanna use a pink crystal um, unfortunately I wanted to use this one but it was just a little too big for our instant pendant um, I think it's a one and a half millimeter diameter but I'm not 100% sure and I want to use one of these crystal rondelle spacers and um, the dragonfly mix I think it was called dragonfly in the box yeah it was just dragonflies also had several pretty crystals so I like this one from the mix um, possibly that blue so let's see 
gonna actually do it from the bottom up just to see what it'll look like. I think I want that pink crystal on the bottom. Our crystal rondelle spacer. I don't know. Oh yeah, that fits in there quite nicely. And then um, our crystal. Oh, he just doesn't fit. I don't know if this one will fit. No. And no. So we have to find one more bead that'll fit on the top. Possibly this filigree bead. Oh, let's see. This wonderful, sparkly, unicorn looking bead fits perfectly. And I don't know, I don't think our bead cap will fit. So let's try, I think that's a little too big. Okay, I found the perfect bead. I grabbed it from a piece of, or yeah, a length of um, chain reaction. It's uh, an opaque white crystal and it looks fantastic. I think I'm gonna trade it for, um, the trade the position for this unicorn looking bead and then I will put the unicorn bead on top. Um, I love that configuration. It's so pretty, it's so sparkly, and it's not permanent. Um, people are going to love this, but in case you change your mind and wanna use this on a bracelet later or as the focal on something else, you can take it apart. So I am going to go ahead and put everything on in the reverse order. So start with my little unicorn, my crystal rondelle, the cloisonne bead, crystal rondel spacer, then our pink rondel. And we have just enough room on there to get our finial on. And if you if you know that you're gonna wanna keep this on here forever, go ahead and dab a little bit of E6000 in there and that won't be going anywhere. And you just wanna keep twisting until it's not gonna twist anymore. And we have our beautiful pendant that can be permanent or not. So I'm going to set that aside and we're gonna build a necklace to go with this yummy yummy pendant a while back i did a video using silver silk and i had some leftover golden it's so pretty and it goes with this ethereal box so well it's just it it doesn't that like echo the contours of that cloisonne bead um so and then i have a double a set of double um end findings by silver silk these are called uh just a, end caps and this one will hold two um, pieces of silver silk so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make um a very short piece of double um, strand necklace for this part so this will be attached using these to the rest of the necklace in just a moment but i am going to cut let's see I'm gonna cut one at seven inches and one at about six, uh, between six and a quarter and six and a half. So the first one I'll cut at seven and I am just going to put that inside, one end inside of our um, end cap and actually we wanna make sure, I'm gonna put the, it's embossed, I'm gonna put the SS to the back even though it's really pretty. Um, I'm gonna put that in one side and we wanna make sure that we close these with nylon jaw pliers. Don't use your regular pliers because you don't wanna mark up these beautiful end caps. Um, actually, <laughs> did that before I got the other piece in the other side. So what you can do is just grab um, a, a thin pair of pliers and pry that back open. I'm glad I kind of I'm kind of glad I did that on camera so you guys can see you know in case you close it and you're like oh my gosh what did I just do you're fine. So one is at seven. Cut this one at just under six and a quarter uh, six and a half. And I am going to slide my pendant on one the longer piece because I want that to hang down. Okay. And then I have a cloisonne bead 
that I would like to go on the larger one. And I don't think there were any other beads that I really wanted to go on there with it. I just, I love these cloisonne beads and this will just be the focus of the middle strand. And you just kind of got to twist it through there. And that way I'll still have another cloisonne bead if I want to make a matching bracelet later on. Twist it through. And I just want to make sure I get it in the middle, although I can position that later. There we go. Perfect. Do I want... I don't think we need any other beads. I think this is beautiful enough. So, okay. Make sure your shorter strand make sure your sh shorter strand is on top and we will go ahead and put that on that side hold it in there and we'll put this one on the other side and if some of the wire is peeking out the sides it's totally okay we can trim it no problem then we're just gonna scrunch like I did before, but this time both pieces are in there. <laughs> and scrunch. Okay, so we have that end finished, and I'm actually gonna trim this just a little bit more. Um, the top one, sorry, the top one is six inches, and the bottom one's just over six and a half. And then um, I, we wanna make sure that both beads are on, well, the bead and our pendant. I had to take it off to get that to stay in the end cap. And then we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. And now that I'm looking at this, we want to make sure that, because we want this pendant to hang, uh, we want to make sure that this one's a little bit shorter. So I'll probably end up taking an inch off of this side to make sure that it doesn't sag or hang below our pendant. Okay, so here is our pendant and our cloisonne bead on our double strand, and it's so sweet and so cute. And then um, I want to use some of this Vegas chain that they included in the box. I just love, love, love the way this looks. Um, and then I'm going to finish it up in the back with um, some chain reaction. I tend to do that when we're not going to even though cha chain reaction is gorgeous and you will see it if your hair is up um, it's a nice way to extend the things that we don't have a lot of so if you have more chain or you have some extra beads you want to do that in the back but where you're going to see this chain i would love to see that in the front of the necklace so um i think i'm going to grab maybe a couple of these matte beads because i kind of like those so we have these matte crystals. I'm just gonna take two, and I'm gonna take two of the bead caps that came, or four of the bead caps that came on the strand. I'm going to get some eye pins, just two gold eye pins. And I'm just gonna create two really quick links. Actually, I think I'm going to do this four times. So I'm going to show you the first one. There we go. Really pretty, very simple. It's not going to um, take away from our, our focal piece. It's just going to ac um, accent it. And we'll go ahead and make a simple loop. And I'll do that three more times. And then we'll just take our pliers and we will make a simple loop. There we go, we'll do that four times. Okay. Got our four links. Um, so the first link I am just going to use to attach our um, Vegas chain to our silver silk. Well, our uncaps at least. And I'll just open those up.
and do it on the other side. Okay. There we go. And then we have our chain. I am going to um, I'm going to measure out probably about two inches and then on either side and then I'll put another link so I'll cut it after two inches put another link and then we'll do another three or four inches and then we'll put the chain reaction up the back And you, you can choose which way you want the chain to go. You, I'm going to have it go this way, but you could have it go and leading away from the pendant as well. And I have to cut off this little guy so we can use the loop on the one next to it. Very carefully, delicately <laughs> um, conduct surgery on your, your chain here. Okay, so let's see. That goes like that. I think it'll be fine. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna twist too much, I don't think. And if it does, it's okay. You can use a jump ring if you'd like. And you can wire wrap this on too if you'd like a sturdier connection. So there's the first piece. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then I'm going to go ahead and put on my next link. We might need a jump ring for this side. I'm having a little bit of trouble and I think it's it's just a weird angle, which is why we're having the issue. Oh, there we go. I was gonna just grab a jump ring, but we made it. <laughs> Close that up. Okay. Actually, I don't think, I think we can save some of our chain. I don't think we're going to need anything, uh, any more of this, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to cut another length just as long as the first. And you, if you really want to, you can count <laughs> your lengths, but I am going to just make sure we have the same amount. Okay. And then we will put our chain onto our link. And then we will make sure our little link comes out of this guy so we can hook in our pink crystal. And that one went on easy as pie. I don't know what was going on with the first one. 
so here we go it's so so pretty and um i always just measure it on myself <laughs> i don't have a secret formula so if you're making it for yourself just measure it on yourself um if you're making it for a broad audience i usually do like if you're doing a short necklace, which this one's more medium length, so it'll probably be around 26 inches. But um, if you're doing shorter length collarbones, probably like 16, 18 inches, mm, probably 18 inches around the inner inner circle. And then um, you can go from there. But this one's going to be medium for me. I like really, really long necklaces, but um, I want to be able to see this and have it prominently displayed. So I am... I think I'm okay with how much chain we have there. If you want to do more the rest of this chain around the back, that's totally fine. And there's quite a, a bunch left, but I want to use these in a matching pair of earrings in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to take the chain reaction and let's see. You want to make sure you don't, if you cut these jump rings in the back, um, make sure you use memory wire cutters. I did damage my nice, um, cutters with, with thinking that this was just regular metal so if you ever cut one of those use your memory wire cutters otherwise just come down here and cut off a link or, or cut the link here so I'm gonna start right here with um, I cut off this piece that's where we took the chain for our pendant or I'm sorry the crystal for our pendant and I'm just gonna come right here and connect it And then, um, so we have four links and then our crystal here. And then we have another four links and then our crystal. And this is 18 inches. Um, I'm gonna cut off some length and uh, connect it towards the other side. So that's about as much as I cut off there. Plus the one crystal on the other side to make the pendant. So here's our medium length to long necklace. Um, I'll show better pictures at the end. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna put on a clasp. Um, there were some really beautiful, actually we'll use the box clasp that came in the kit. So the kit came with two box, two gold box clasps and one and two silver box clasps. And I think they were all sterling silver, um, at least plated, because it said um, 925 on the back. Isn't that pretty? And if you'd like, you can go ahead and patina your, your clasp. Um, I'm going to line up my two crystals here. And then I'm going to hold my chain down so we get the middle. And the middle is this crystal right here. I'm going to leave the crystal on so it'll be a little bit um, asymmetrical, but it'll be okay. Cut this little jump ring right there or link. And then I'll just attach my box clasp with the provided jump rings. They were already on the box clasp. Keep grabbing different pliers and then we'll do the other side And our necklace 
is finished and you guys know how much I love creating one of a kind pieces and if you create this for yourself none of your friends will have anything that looks like this it's so amazing and we've got our beautiful cloisonne art beads on display right at the front this beautiful chain leading up to some more beautiful chain and a wonderful box clasp. I'll include pictures at the end of the video so you can see everything against the nice background and laid out really well. So we got to get this guy in the center. There we go. Just love that. All right, so we'll finish up. We have, I have two pairs of earrings that I want to make with you. They're very simple. Um, I'll be, let me clean up a little bit and we'll be right, right okay. back. So from the Comes May Flowers um, set, I pulled out two of these charms. They're gold. I'm also going to use more of the Vegas chain on this earring. And um, I'm going to use several of the beads from the Dragonfly mix. So we have um, a teeny tiny crystal rondelle spacer. We have um, a cube rectangle aqua bead crystal we have a tiny tiny rondelle and a pink rondelle um, I'm also going to use um, a beadalon um, ball head pin so the easiest part of this uh, piece of the earring will be slipping on our four beads so I'm going to put the pink crystal rondelle space or crystal rondelle on the bottom then we'll put on our rondelle spacer our cube rectangle and our teeny tiny rondelle at the top and we're just gonna make a simple loop you can wire wrap that's totally fine I'm just gonna do a simple loop today go and that's just a simple little charm and we're gonna hang this guy right from the bottom of our teardrop there's a window right there that we can connect swing that closed so that would be a cute earring but that's not where we're stopping um, I'm going to measure a few of these links out. We're going to cut off this guy because he was damaged in the way we made the, the necklace. But we want to keep the bottom part of that other link. So just cut that guy in half. And I think I'm going to go make this a little bit of a longer neck or earring. And you can absolutely patina this, but I wanted, I, I kind of wanted the pop of gold between the turquoise and the, the turquoise and aqua or green, whatever colors these are. So I'm going to go with one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go with five links. This guy right here. making sure not to cut the loop on the piece that needs to connect to our ear wire. So I need a tiny jump ring, teeny tiny. Go ahead and swing that open. Actually, we might need two jump rings now that I'm looking at this. Yeah, we'll need two teeny tiny jump rings. <laughs> um, the way to get around using two jump rings would be to have the chain go this way because these holes are facing the same way. We want the chain, um, we want to be able to see the front of the chain, not the side of the chain when, when it's hanging on an earring. We'll close that up. Open our another another jump ring. I 
hang our charm and then grab an ear wire. And put our little piece of chain right on that ear wire. Close that up. We have a pretty long earring, but it's fabulous <laughs> and adorable. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. If you want it to be shorter, all you need to do is choose a smaller section of chain here, or you can turn it upside down and eliminate the one of the jump rings. But I think that's super cute. And then we will move on. I'll show you again at the end of the video, everything on a really nice background. Um, and then we're gonna move on to our last pair of earrings. At the beginning of this entire saga, do you remember we painted these orchids? Um, at least I think they're orchids, they could be lilies. And they're super cute, they're dry, and they're so pretty, and they're custom. That's the cool thing about changing your, your beads. They're beautiful the way they are, but you can change them to um, suit your needs. I'm just going to grab two eye pins. You can um, wire wrap these if you'd like. Uh, today I'm gonna go the easy route and <laughs> make simple loops. And I grabbed some more beads from the um, Dragonfly mix. So I'm gonna put a another bead cap at the bottom here. One of our unicorn beads. I'm going to put a crystal rondelle spacer. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put on a another bead cap, a crystal rondelle spacer, this light blue with a B or luster um, rondelle, and I think I'm gonna put on another bead cap. Just make it super fancy, right? Yeah, and Another, maybe the pink bead? Let's see. Why not? Why not? These are gonna be some fantastic earrings. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim. So our link looks like this. So pretty. It actually looks like a little a little lady, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and I'm going to open the bottom of our eye pen, hang it on our charm, grab an ear wire, and we have a beautiful custom earring. If somebody comments your earrings, not only can you say, hey, I made these, but hey, I painted these. I handmade these. So um, if your eye pin isn't facing the right way at the top, just twist it. Um, you kind of want to plan for that when you're making the loop. I didn't. So I'm just going to twist it. I'm going to hold down here and I'm going to go like that. And that actually worked really well that time. Sometimes it doesn't work too well, and you just kind of have to finagle it until it works. But I'm going to open that up. Put it on my ear wire. And there's our custom earring. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, I'll meet you back and I'll show you all the pieces together. Okay, so here is our beautiful necklace and um, let me see if I can get in a little closer. Here we go. Raise that up a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's one of my more favorite necklaces that I've made in a while and I, I didn't see it coming. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we have our beautiful um, instant pendant that we can change in, change in and change out. So sparkly that cloisonne bead is really on um, display. We've got another beautiful cloisonne bead on our um, silver silk, our beautiful enamel uh, Vegas chain, some more pinky mauve crystals, and our chain reaction. So there's our necklace. And then um, here are our matching earrings. I would say these earrings match perfectly. The filigree in the drops matches our bead caps and our cloisonne bead. And then we have our adorable little orchids or lilies whatever they are with our beautiful little um, unicorn rhinestone bead that's what I keep calling it it's, now it's named unicorn bead <laughs> which also matches because we've got the pink and our um, unicorn bead right here so beautiful set let me know what you think I am in love with it unfortunately I don't wear earrings so these will probably become gifts to friends or family but I am absolutely thrilled um, if you liked what you saw today please uh, visit me over on tur turquoise.street on YouTube and I also have a um, Facebook group called Britney's Beads uh, where I post tutorials and lots of fun. It's lots of fun over there right now. We have a 30-day earring challenge so these will be part of that. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks so much to Jesse James Beads for having me back and I um, hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.